I'm very fortunate to have this amazing sunset spot to come home to every day. It is only about a hundred yards from my driveway and it looks out to the ocean. So, you are now getting 30 minutes time lapse broken down into only one minute. If I time it right, I often get to pull over and sit on some of these big rocks and it gives me a chance to unwind and think about my day. Because these YouTube videos have become such an important and creative piece of my day, I am always thinking. I think about what I can shoot that will add to the value of this growing collection of tree and tree care videos. I think about how to improve the quality of the productions to make them more watchable and, and sometimes a bit humorous. But I'm always thinking about the value of these videos. The value to someone who really wants to learn more about trees. And if you're here, that must be you. And right now, I'm thinking about this moment in my day and seeing it unfold before my eyes, watching the sunset evolve and then dissolve. You know, here in California, we're so fortunate to be able to grow avocado trees. And here's a beautiful, beautiful example of a really productive tree. And I drove up to it and I was aghast. The property next door did not like the mess. It was more important to them to do that to this beautiful tree. Look at that, there's a ripe avocado right there. They didn't like anything overhanging it. And they said to themselves, it's within our right to cut everything back to the property line because we own the space to the sky and we're going to screw up that tree, do whatever we want. And they did it over here and over here and over here. I didn't know the truth of this whole story, but it sure seems to me like a crying shame what they did. And clearly this was not done by anybody that knows how to prune a tree. I see this every single day. I mean, we need to learn to respect our trees, especially a giving tree like this, a tree that gives so much quality fruit and, and such expensive fruit. I, I, I just, oh, this breaks my heart. It really, really does. The ignorance of people these days is just, uh, it floors me. So here's another interesting little tree that we got into. This is a fruitless mulberry. And if you're familiar with this tree, it is a tree that is often cut back severely, often referred to as pollarding, but realistically it's butchering. And this tree has been cut back and cut back and cut back so many times in its life that it is just riddled with decay. There is so much rot in this tree that I can't believe that it's still sprouting out. So last year was the first time I got to this tree and I told this old woman, I said, you know, Let's not do it again. Let's, let's keep some integrity to this tree because it's going to be gone in just a few years. Let's just shape it, bring it down so it doesn't get too heavy. But let's leave all the buds. Let's leave it full. And she said that that was the best it ever looked when it, when it sprouted out in the spring. So we're doing it yet again. But I'm always al alarmed by the decay and, and the fact that somebody screwed this tree up in the first place. And it didn't need to be this way full of holes, full of rot. You can see for yourself. Yeah, we've got kind of an interesting small job today. I've already taken off half of the brush on this thing. This is a, an Albizia. Some people call them mimosas, some people call them silk trees, but it's an Albizia. But anyway, it's in a really tight spot. It's in this tiny little corner of this little backyard and the only way we can get it out of here is through the garage. There's no access. And on top of that we got a foam roof up here. It's a flat top roof. I can walk on it but if I was to drop anything on it it would puncture it and I'm sure that would end up being an expensive complicated repair. It's kind of interesting that this tree with the foam roof has built up this accumulation of gunk and all of the rain gutters, I just cleared this one and completely blocked off by this stuff and plugged up. So I could see how the tree would create a lake 
up here if you don't pay attention to it. This whole thing would have filled up with water and boy, the amount of weight that would have been added to this, this roof would have been tremendous. So, kind of interesting looking at all the, the ways the water gets off of here. This one actually had uh, three. I guess that one at the end is, is probably clear enough. But where does it go? I mean, they go down. If they get plugged up, which clearly they do easily, um, oh, they just they just pour into the. That's odd. So this thing fills up with water, and the three rain gutters here fill up this and <laughs> make the lake down there. I don't know. So I gotta take this down carefully, one piece at a time. I think I'll work my way around the edges, and we've got. Uh, some degradation along the edges here and this part of it is starting to show some compromise sometimes you get a bubble in these foam roofs and if you step on the bubble it cracks so you got to be really really careful cognizant of, of where you walk and how you walk and sometimes it's a good idea to get the blower out and blow all this crap out of the way just so you know where to step and where not to step you know, you'll see some of these little ridges that kind of comes up. And I'm not sure if this is a good system or a bad system, but I sure run into a lot of foam roofs that show compromise. <laughs> so, okay, I'm documenting that. We didn't do that. <laughs> As it rains, water will get up underneath there and get up underneath and get down into the the main part of the building. All right, back to work. All right, here's one of the rain gutters. It is clearly clogged up. I have to get in there and really get all that stuff out of there. Both sides. That's not my job, but I'm gonna bring it to their attention. Look at this. This is one of those little bubbles I was talking about. If I step on that, that'll crack. And then all the water that comes in here will go into that little crack and seep down into the underlayment. It's really easy to bury the ground guys in a tight spot like this. Just pick the nice perch and hang it out. Uh-oh, something's going on over there. Car fire, maybe? That just happened. It just came up. So not knowing what was going on, I, I ran down the street because I thought maybe it was a house fire or somebody needed help. And it turns out that it was right across the freeway in the creek. And I'm guessing it was a homeless encampment or something that got out of control. But that was a little bit of excitement for the day. So what I didn't explain before is this tiny little community has no parking on the street. And it was a dead-end street, so rather than bringing the chipper out here, we decided to just shuttle it all with the pickup. Lucy didn't think we could get it all in there, but I had confidence. There's an interesting little bit of advice. The back here, there's a solanum. It's called the potato vine. It's got these pretty blue flowers on it. And if I cut this off of the ground, because it's a vine, the root system will come back and it will vigorously grow and all these sprouts will come up. But if you take the dominant sprout and cut everything else off and stake that one, and when it gets up about this high, you pinch it, and then you'll get two and you let those grow. And, and the two, you'll pinch those and there'll be four and then there'll be eight. And by the time this gets up about oh, five or six feet tall, which will just be a few months, then you can start training it and let it weep over and you'll have a really nice plant that'll come back quickly and vigorously. But a lot of people see things like this and say, oh, it's garbage, get rid of it. So I'm gonna cut it down to the ground and mention that to the client and see what, uh, what they say. This is the bottom of the stump of this Albizia. And what's interesting, there's a couple of little Ganodermas growing down here, down over here. I don't know if you can see that. Ganoderma aplanatum. So there was a bit of decay happening in this old tree. But really pretty wood. Look at the wood. 
I've never milled this type of wood, but I'll bet it would be beautiful. It's a tropical wood, but it grows in California. So back to the job, we're finished. And this is a clear cut case of wrong tree in the wrong place. They had this tiny little growing area and the roots from this albizia spread out underneath the concrete and cracked it and lifted it. And every piece of wood that we dropped on there, you could hear that it was hollow. So, like I said before, we ended up putting everything in my truck. And I got up there with a chainsaw and cut and cut and cut and got it all cut down. And yeah, we pulled it off. So now i got to go unload this. So let's go full circle back to that sunset that I talked about in the beginning here. It was an interesting day, a long day. Um, nothing too exciting and special, but I hope you learned a little bit. And uh, please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And please pass this on. Thanks.